older that I got, the more and more I started involving myself in alcohol. I'm an all in or nothing kind of guy. I've always been that way. Probably one of the greatest decisions I ever made in my life. This place and PCM saved my life. Hi, my name's Timmy Cummins. I was client number 819 here at Rob's Ranch. My sobriety date is May 28th, 2016. Um, forever, for that, I'm forever grateful. Um, man, growing up in a small town in western Oklahoma, Clinton, Oklahoma, um, I had a basic childhood, you know. I, I had great parents, uh, great brothers and sisters. Um, I was treated with a lot of love, a lot of respect. Um, they were... They were very patient with me. They, uh, they knew, they started seeing changes in me when probably I was about 15, 16. You know, I was hanging around older got people because I just didn't feel accepted of who I was in my own skin. Um, I was a chameleon. I would hang out with this cert, cert, these certain kind of people, then I would shift to this certain part of the crowd and more the upperclassmen. Um, you know, I, I love baseball, I love basketball. I mean, I was your everyday happy-go-lucky guy. You know, um, I didn't feel too threatened when I was in high school. Um, I got along with everybody, you know. I just had that nice, easy, um, smile about myself. I could just get along with everybody. Um, happy go lucky, as they say. You know, um, the, the older that I got, the more and more I started involving myself in alcohol. You know, I uh, started this journey about, you know, 20 plus years ago, and I've always had a, um, a fighting addiction. I was always fighting it. You know, I didn't, I didn't really know what was going on deep down inside of me. Um, I do have an addictive personality, you know. Um, I'm an all-in or nothing kind of guy. I've always been that way. Um, I've always been able to maintain good jobs, but once I got to the point where I didn't want them, I, you know, I, I lost or I got fired or, or something, you know, I was let go, just anger issues. I just wasn't myself, you know, and that went on for a while. And, you know, then life really started happening probably in my mid twenties, you know, I ended up getting married and was married for eight and a half years of my life. And, you know, uh, during that eight and a half years, um, me and my wife, we had, a. Uh, for miscarriages, you know, and, and, and that stung. That stung really, really hard um, to me. Um, there were some other things in my life that I really thought that I would carry to my grave. You know, I, I never thought I would be that person to humbly ask for help, you know. Um, Man, it got so bad, you know, after our divorce. I, I stayed strong, really strong for um, a really good solid year. I was hanging around with the right people at church. Um, I had a lot of, I had a great support um, system around me. And then finally, just one day out of the blue, I was mowing my yard and, you know, I thought, man, a beer sounds really good. and. From there, I mean, it just progressively got worse and worse and worse. And I was able to uh, maintain it, you know, actively maintain it. Um, I had some great jobs, um, making great money. I didn't ever think that, you know, I had a problem. You know, a lot of it that I've learned out and learned now, um, it was denial. I was in so much denial, you know. Um, I thought it was okay to drink a 12 pack every day or then on the weekends just get turned up bad. 
you know, then all of a sudden I start getting DUIs after DUIs and I always, you know, blamed it on, on the cops. They were at the right place at the wrong time and I just bad luck, just bad luck. Um, you know, then it just really, then I just really got deep, deep, deep depressed. It was very dark um, time in my life. And, you know, good old thing about social media, you get to uh, see people change. You get to see the real them on social media. And, you know, Jeremy Gray, I, I grew up with him. Uh, we had a really close relationship there for a while. He went his way, I went mine. Then about mid-May of 2016, I reached out to him and said, hey, man, is there any way I can talk with you? And he said, yeah. And, you know, I, I went on a binger right there, a pretty good 30, 45 days, and I knew he was speaking there in a local church in Elk City, and it was May 22nd. It was on my birthday, so I was like, well, I'm going to convince myself if I can stay sober for till five o'clock, go over there, talk to him, see what he has to offer, then then maybe um, maybe something will happen. Well, I did what, what I told myself that I was gonna do, went over there and I talked to him, uh, and I got to hear his story, you know, and a lot of his story was a lot like mine. You know, and we left that night and I was all happy and giddy and I was on the phone with my dad and. You know, driving back into Clinton, I said, man, I, again, I stopped. I thought I was going to have one or two and ended up, you know, getting really, really bad again and went on about a week. And finally, it got so bad. I was just in a deep, depressed mind, um, really dark, really dark. Um, and I knew I needed some help. I knew I could not live this way anymore in my life. Um, before I knew it, my, my dad was over at my apartment, get me out of my apartment. And I woke up at my mom and dad's house that next morning and I contacted Jeremy and I said, Jeremy, what, what do I need to get into Rob's ranch? And he told me what I needed to do. And I said, okay, I am willing. The first time in my life I've been able, I was able to be willing and ask for help. A lot of ego and pride has been in my life for a long time, you know? Um, and so June 8th of 2016 is when I checked here in to here to Rob's ranch and <sighs> probably one of the greatest decisions I ever made in my life. You know, when I was hopeless and depressed and didn't think that I could ever go on facing life again, this place helped me tremendously. This place has a huge spot in my heart. It always will. What these counselors do to get, get everything out of you is unbelievable. You know, at the time that I was here, my counselor was Bill Anderson, and he always knew I, I, I love food and sports. So he's like, Timmy, your life is like a big old piece of pizza. You gotta take it one slice at a time. And I promise you, it's been a huge pizza the last two and a, hit, two and a half years of my life. And what I, I got so much out of being here for that 90 days, I, man, everything, I just put my life on hold. I did whatever I needed to do to get here because I saw Jeremy's grays, his, his smile, man, it, it was contagious, very contagious. And he took a chance on me when nobody else would, you know, and while I was here, man, I was able to get rid of all that shame and that guilt. Man, I dumped so many buckets here. When they told me to take risk, I took them. I did everything that they um, wanted, wanted me to and asked of me, then more. And when we were checking myself in, Jeremy was like, man, you know, 
here's the deal. I want you to spend, you know, nine months at my sober living houses. And I looked at him and I was like, man, are you serious? You know, I, I, I'm here for 90 days. I'll be cured, you know? that pride and that ego arose again in my life. And I remember old Mike Jones saying, bud, you might want to listen to him, you know? And so while I was here, it just kept on touching my heart, touching my heart. And they just kept on saying, what are you willing to do? What are you willing to do to stay sober the rest of your life? Well, I bought into Jeremy and, you know, I, I transfer or I transitioned out of here um, September the 8th of 2016 and to be honest with you I never looked back um, it was probably the best decision that I ever made um, I was trying to find who the real Timmy Cummins is and what my purpose in life is and to help other suffering alcoholics and addicts um, since I've been there I have gained a huge brotherhood in my life. Um, Jeremy's got these rules that, you know, we got to ab abide by, you know, and they're the same rules that applied here at the ranch, you know, and I had to be really honest with myself because I need structure. I have to have structure in my life because if you leave me alone without structure, watch out because TC's about to go crazy. Um, so I, you know, it, it's been an awesome privilege um, and experience there. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm still there today. Um, I was just in a bad financial place in my life. I was just broken, guys. I mean, I was broken. You know, the last two and a half years of my life is, I, I'm, I'm starting to take action in my life. I'm starting to engage myself around people that have the same desire that I have. You know, um, the people that I have today love me for who I am and not what I've done and not what's in my bank account. You know, they love me for watching me grow in the last two and a half years. Has it been easy? No. Has it been worth it? Absolutely. You know, um, my parents were <clears throat> very big supporters of me. Growing up, they've supported everything that I've done. And that time when I just went on my, my tangent, you know, I hurt my mom and dad pretty bad. Very, very bad. And today I could actually look at them and, and know that you know, that bridge is really starting to heal. You know, redemption is, is coming with just not only my mom and dad, my family, my siblings, because I didn't want to be around them. I just, I didn't want to be around them at all. And you know, what the ranch taught me and what Jeremy's house has taught me is your family loves you. The d disease hates you. Your family is all you have. You know, um, man, today I'm just very grateful to uh, be a part of Rob's Ranch, being an alumni, coming down here, sharing my experience, strength, and hope. You know, I'm sitting behind this cross right here, and while I was here, man, I'm telling you, I came down here at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning just bawling my eyes out because I just didn't know what was happening. just didn't know what was happening. And, that was the time that I, you know, I found out what surrendering all about meant, you know, and this is where I surrendered my will and my life to Him, you know, and today I'm a totally different person and, and what PTM means to me, um, and I know Jeremy knows this quite well, <sighs> means the world, this place, and. PCM saved my life. When I didn't think uh, my life was worth saving. Um, and I have grabbed a hold of this opportunity and today my life is around recovery. You know, 
Um, I have more friends today in recovery than I ever thought I, I would be. I have a spiritual mentor that we talk probably once or twice a day. We hang out together, we play golf together. You know, he, he sees a lot in me. He's rough on me, but he's like a coach. You know, he wants to see the good in his people, you know. Um, today, I'm just so honored and grateful to come down here and share a little bit of my story with you. Um, it's just been an awesome, awesome journey that, you know, I'm still, I'm still new at. You know, I, I still learn each and every day.